When I discovered orchestra pieces by, say, Mozart or Beethoven, and I, and I found out that they weren't necessarily writing because they knew how to play all of those instruments in the orchestra, like, that was a revelation to me. They could just, oh, this is just something that you can do, right? Yeah, um, or like not, not being able to play the instruments like, and yeah, write yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually that something was, that... That was a revelation to me. Yeah? Yeah. It's still, uh, when people ask me what I do, or that's usually the first question. Oh, you can you play all the instruments? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. My hell no, I can barely play the piano. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome here. So Thank this you. is Joshua Sardinia, and uh, he's straight from the Philippines. He flew over here just to see me. Just to be on the show, isn't that right? Just to be on the show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Cheers. Um, so, when's the last time I saw you? Um, I don't remember. It may have been in China. Oh, I shit. Think. That's or, crazy. Or No, 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 no. I saw you briefly at um, Christopher Rouse's memorial at oh, Julia yeah, yeah, that's in right. uh, 20, 2020. That was early 2020, very early before 2020. The pandemic. Yeah, that was right before I, I uh, moved out of moved out of New York and uh, flew back to the Philippines. Yeah. So I've had a few of our cohorts from Juilliard that did our masters. I had Nikki Son, which you can watch. Um, I had Alexander Alexander Lieberman, but not part of our class. The year above us. Um, who am I forgetting? I'm probably forgetting someone. I think those are the only people I've those had. Those are the so only far. people, probably. Actually, that's strange. Those are the only people I've had from our mm -hmm. vicinity yeah. one, two years. Yeah. So I'll have more of them on eventually. Oh, good. They're, they're around here. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. But why are you here? <laughs> why am I here? here? <laughs> um, why am I here? I have a. Well, it's not me. I'm not performing. That's, that's the thing about us composers. You know, we don't. I have a. <laughs> No, not me. The Florida Orchestra uh, <laughs> is, is uh, performing uh, a piece of mine next weekend, um, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, and also the Utah Symphony is performing the same piece as well later this month, no, uh, later in January. Yeah, so a um, bunch of orchestra. A bunch of orchestra. It's one, it's pieces the same piece. one back, yeah. one off to the other. Mm -hmm. and what's the piece called? It's the same piece. The same piece is called, uh, the piece is called oh. Feuer Trunken. Um, it's kind of a 10 minute concert opener, very loud. Very, very, very much takes after uh, uh, Christopher Rouse, who with whom I studied, uh, the late Christopher Rouse, um, and it was originally a commission from the Detroit Symphony. Yeah. Um, a few years back in 2017, when uh, Leonard Slatkin was, uh, I think he was just about to retire from uh, uh, from the orchestra, and then he had this idea of well, instead of commissioning all these. All his big composer friends, he'd get um, he'd get them to recommend students, uh, their students, to write pieces for Detroit for the Detroit Symphony. Um, so so that piece yeah. wasn't done at Juilliard ever. It wasn't done at Juilliard ever. Oh, it was, so it was yeah, commissioned yeah, yeah. by them and they by yeah. Detroit and as then if they Juilliard were... would do anything. <laughs> right, right. But sometimes because at Juilliard there's a reading program uh, that they do a lot of readings for orchestra pieces. So I wasn't. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember if they so they never read that. No, no, it was no. Detroit it was a, that yeah, yeah, played it. Was it, a, it was okay. straight up a commission from them. Okay, good. Um, I wrote it for them in 2017. Yeah, I had, I had a, they flew me out there to Detroit to see the premiere. Um, had a great time, and then, and then that was it until 2020. It was picked up again by uh, by Fauzi Haimor, uh, who before then I didn't really had any prior uh, communication yeah. with. You know, uh, I guess he just he just liked it, um, and then and then uh, the it was the Virginia Symphony, and then they just contacted me and said. Uh, uh, we're going to going to perform your piece, blah blah blah, and then that was kind of my first entry into the world of into into the whole professional world of being a composer. You professional know, it's, it's world. not well, like, kind of, <laughs> but it's different from the student the student right. uh, version where you're kind of just writing one piece after the next. Some of them for people who are actually going to play it. Some of them not really. Um, and and then there's that uh, subtle. There's that nice kind of um, world you enter after a while where pieces you wrote before get performed again. 
right? <laughs> well, I hope so. Well, I mean, no, no, it's true. That's the it's dream, true. right? It's true. I mean, it's nice when you, especially a big institution, wants to play your music and it's not a commission. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it lowers the pressure a little bit. Right. Of which of your responsibility. It does. It, it, in, in terms of weight, you know, it's still, uh, it, has kind of, it has kind of the same weight as a premiere, right? For me anyway, because it's, it's a performance and orchestra performance are so rare. It's so rare for anyone to have the opportunity, to, you know, like, like for me, it certainly is, is pretty rare. Um, it's, it's amazing to me each time to think about it. Yeah. You know, like, do, do I have orchestras here who are, who are you know, performing my work? It's, it's a thing that happens still with some regularity. Like, um, and, you know, I, th I think for anyone who has that opportunity, it's kind of a, like um, 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 a testament to like, uh, the, the work you've done before because it takes an enormous amount of work to, yeah. to kind of get to a point like that. And all that work may or may not be rewarded. Um, and I mean, with an orchestra piece too, it's like, <laughs> it takes a lot of work to write an orchestra piece. Yeah. But to write a good orchestra piece, it takes yeah. a lot of like bad orchestra pieces that you wrote before right, that yeah. to get to the good orchestra piece. So you kind of have to do it right the first time. Um, <laughs> and also how it works a lot, again, how it works uh, uh, a lot of the time is, you, you know, you, you work on a commission, the, whoever commissioned it performs it. And then they only do it once ever. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever hears it again. Um, Right? I don't, I don't know. Maybe in your experience it's different. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I, for me at least, I mean, I, I think for any composer, if you have, like, more than, like, a couple performances a year, like, every year, that's like, wow, you are, like, a performed yeah, really? wow. orchestral composer, mm -hmm. I, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, one year I might have had 10, 11, 12 performances, and I thought, wow, I'm, like, on cloud nine. But, yeah. like, what yeah. am I doing the other 350 days? I don't have right. an orchestra performance. Yeah, I mean that's a really pessimistic way to look at it, but um, if you tell that to anyone else in any other field, it's like, oh, well, I had ten orchestra performances this year. It's mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> that doesn't sound like a lot, right? Right. You know? Yeah. But it's not. That's not how we can. We cannot quantify. Quant quantify. We can't quantify. Quantify. That should be a word. <laughs> we can't quantify our work that way by the number of performances we have, especially yeah, yeah, our orchestra sure. music. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And, and that's just the nature of uh, the, I mean, whatever you want to call it, the contemporary classical music uh, business, right? That's just the nature of it. Like, it's not a real business. It's, it, ultimately, it's, it's something we do kind of, you know, I, I think some of us pretend otherwise that, oh, we do it because we want to, we want to move people or whatever. We want yeah. to reach people with our music. But I, I think sometimes that's kind of a lie. Um, I think ultimately we do it for ourselves, right? I 100% agree. Yeah. I always tell everyone, like, I'm, I'm, when it comes to my music, I'm the biggest narcissist. Yeah. And it's not even because we're big narcissists or we just, you know, we think all that highly of ourselves. It's just that there's something in us that just compels us to do it. And, yeah. we, and if we don't do it, we feel like, uh, we feel like we'll like, just wither and die. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just <laughs> I know what you mean. It's it's not like you care what other people think of your music either. Otherwise, yeah. you would be writing like you know you would just go with whatever trend there is. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But, Even though sometimes we like to pretend that you know, like oh, we're 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 thinking of our audiences and you know, and we want to be, we want to reach people and we want to be loved. Like that, that that's partly true, but it's it's not the um, it's not the goal. You know, it's not the ultimate. Yeah. Uh, uh, goal. I so. mean, I think there's nothing more vain than writing a piece of music, especially a long piece of music. And when I mean long, I guess long these days is like more than five minutes. More than five minutes. <laughs> and expecting a bunch of people to sit there and listen to it. Right. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I Like to me, it's almost like being a politician. It's like, you know, you give a speech, no matter what you say, you expect people to, to sit there and listen to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, what other like art form and besides film, but I feel like film is a little different because there's so many people collaborating to yeah. make that thing work that it's a little less like a vanity project. I yeah. think it's more like a collective thing, but with composing, right. it's like, it's just you. You're the one that wrote it's it. It's just us, yeah. You expect these people to play it. Yeah, yeah. And then you expect the musicians to want to play it and, and play it well. Yeah. For a relatively low wage that they make. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
and then you expect the audience to like it, and then you expect the conductor or whoever to want to do it again at another orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you've hit the trifecta with that. that. <laughs> That's why it's just, I don't know, to me, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's just such a miracle, you know? <laughs> Especially if it's, uh, again, it's a piece that I'd already uh, written for someone else that had no involvement in it being written in the first place. Uh, if someone else like, wants to play it yeah. or is interested in, in it, wants to hear it, wants to work on it, that's, you know, to me, yeah. like, uh, 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 pretty miraculous, you know, and it, it's kind of... Yeah, one, I mean, one there's of those an element of luck that goes yeah, yeah, into yeah. it, yeah, yeah for sure. Course. I mean, if the person has to know you, first of all, and then after they know you, they have to like your music. And then after they like their mu your music, it has to match well with whatever program that, that they're right, intending right, right. to bring to whatever orchestra it is. So yeah. there's just got to be so many things that align. Yeah, 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 yeah. That to make it work. Yeah. Speaking of that, it's fun to see what... Um, it's fun to see where other people kind of uh, see your piece fitting in into a larger program. Because like in the like for example in the next month I have uh, the same piece it's going to be with uh, performed by two different orchestras the programs complete are completely different oh yeah what, what is the program different. even though it's the same conductor also yeah um, the one with the Florida is more with the Florida orchestra is more jazzy um, so it's got uh, an American in Paris by Gershwin that's okay. kind of like the main uh, the main the main event and then uh, there's a tuba concerto by Wynton Marsalis and, and uh, your piece some, opens it. I, I don't know if my piece opens okay. it exactly. It's somewhere there. But um, and there's some by, uh, something by Duke Ellington and... Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. There, there's something that... That might, that might be all of it. But it's very like jazz. Americana jazz. Yeah, Americana jazz. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I'm not sure how my piece fits into it, but I guess I'll, you know, that I'll, I'll find out. It might work, it might not. But, you know, whatever. And yeah. then that's with the Florida Orchestra. And then with Utah... Uh, the, uh, the, it's Carmina, Carmina Burana is the main thing, and okay. then Firebird. Wow. <laughs> and then my own piece, which means, which in English means uh, fire drunk. So they've got the whole fire thing. I feel like it matches Carmina. well with Firebird and yeah, Carmina yeah, yeah. Burana. I feel like that makes sense. That makes more sense to me than the jazz one, although the, the, the jazz program I'm, I'm very interested in, in uh, seeing how it plays out. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it could be just that they were looking for an overture and, you know, it happened to be yours. Yeah. And they yeah, didn't yeah. really think about it musically. Right. I find, like, these things kind of happen a lot, too, where, like, the conductor or the administration, they've heard of your name or they know about you, but they don't, like, listen to it. I mean, I don't know what it is like with your specific case, but they don't really, they never heard the piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll hear the piece the first time yeah. during the weekend of rehearsals. Right. And then right, they right. find out whether it fits or not. Right. Well, in, in my case, uh, I have a video of it. Well, the, the Detroit Symphony has a video of it, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they checked that out. It so exists, It's not yeah. like they didn't, you know, they didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, so, and they went, when they went ahead with it, so... Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, It'll awesome. be cool to see. I'm going to be there. I'm flying out to Florida next weekend, and, uh, uh, and uh, just going to be there for the, for the performance, you know, see how yeah. it is. Yeah, by the time, time this airs, I think those, that show probably would have happened, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. airing this later in January. Sure, yeah. Yeah. That's fine. But it'll be my first time to see my own work played in person uh, since the pandemic. So it'll be, it'll be extra special. <laughs> God. <laughs> and I'm such crazy. a Gershwin fan, too. Like, I love American in Paris. It's, you know, like to, to be next to it is such an honor. Um, no, it's great. I mean, you know, it, especially because you're not you're not here in the states. You're you're in the Philippines right mm -hmm. now. I'm or in not, the Philippines right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, not right now, but but like, right this second. You know, <laughs> currently live there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what is it like? So you graduated 2016. Did you stay uh, in America after that? For, I think you were on OPT or something, right? I was or, on OPT for a year. Uh, OPT like the, the 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 basically just means you get to work for a year. On your student visa, um, so you don't have to like apply for a work visa. So you know, it's just kind of like a way that for them to, uh, like, they they let you like you know like uh, establish a career yeah. um, after your studies in America without having to apply for a new visa. So I did that for a year and um, ended up doing some music arts, nonprofit stuff, yeah. um, and that kind of uh, kept me kept me floating in New York City for you know uh, how many years. Uh, I ended up. 
up until uh, 2020. So it was like four years of, of working. I wasn't one of those. I mean, you know, like all, all of you guys just went, went on and uh, went straight to DMAs and stuff. Well, you, you didn't. I think you took like a year. I between. took one year. Yeah, off, yeah, yeah. But, but um, everyone else like, you know, went, went and did their PhDs and DMAs and whatnot. And I was always just... Well, I, I thought I wanted to do that also for a, for a while, but at, once I got to my second year at Juilliard, I was just... I don't see myself like, like in school for that much I remember you were very disillusioned with the, with the prospect of staying with yeah, school. Yeah, you remember that. I, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also was too, but not at, I don't not, think not at your degree. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I left the door open, but like I didn't apply at all. Like yeah. everyone else did, but I left it open. You know, um, it wasn't. I didn't feel like I was ready to commit to some place for yeah. five years, just yet. You know, after moving to just I, moving to yeah, New York. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I, I also just kind of wanted to see what was. I was just very curious about like what was out there. You know, outside of school. Yeah, and I think there's a tendency with us to kind of avoid that because like, what what the hell do you do with a music degree, right? What else do you do but go, I have, keep going I'm to school? Doing this. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, yeah but you can't I really was, do much. I mean, that, I, I get it. That's scary. Yeah. That's really scary. You can't do much with it. You kind of have to be creative with it. You can't just, you know, go out with a music degree expecting to, you know, expecting that you're going to get a job. It doesn't work that way. Even a degree from Juilliard, which is right. kind of crazy to think about. Actually, even, even degrees that are, not, that are not music that you think are useful, like it's not that easy yeah. <laughs> nowadays. But, um, but I was just, I don't know, I was just really curious about it. Like, what else can I do that's kind of not the, um, not the usual route? And, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I was okay at school, you know, I was an okay, I was, a, I was an okay student. It's not like I was a bad student or hated studying. I, I liked studying, I liked all of that. I just found it um, a little, again, it was, it was more curiosity about what was out there. And the fact that school felt like you're pushed down a certain, you know, pushed down a certain path and you're expected to kind of just stay there, you know. I mean, right now, at least, at least if you're on the Internet a lot like I am, <laughs> is such a there's a huge push against academia and going to even yeah. going to school. Yeah. Like even going to undergrad. It's mm -hmm. like there's all these courses online now. Right. That you can like buy for like three hundred dollars, you get like a full semester's worth of stuff. Right. You want, like if you're self disciplined, I guess you could you could make up your own college experience where mm -hmm. you're learning exactly the same stuff. Yeah. And I just wonder if a model like that would work at all with composition specifically. That's, that's an interesting thought. I definitely think we as a whole that the world of, you know, composition, you know, all this new music contemporary classical stuff we definitely could use with like less permission fewer permissions mm. to be able to do it you know I, I think a lot of people a lot of uh you know young people who are who have an interest in it think they have to go to all these fancy schools and get like five degrees to be able to do it you know um i, I get emails every now and then from people who are just curious you know like hey how do i get to juilliard how do i, how do, I do this how do i do that and and it's always, I feel like they, they're convinced that to be able to do this, you have to have a degree. You have to have two degrees or three degrees. You need to know the right people. You have to go to the right schools. And it may be true, right? I, I, I wish it wasn't so true. Um, I feel like I don't know it's what we true can do now. About it really. yeah. It's true now. It's true now. But I feel like there should be a path without it. You know, should be a if, you're that, very, yeah. if you're very motivated and you actually love to compose, right, right. You know, I feel like there should be a path. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. And there's so much stuff they teach you at, in, as a composition major that makes, especially as an undergrad, that like uh -huh. makes no sense to know. Like, why do I have <laughs> like to what? do all these general education classes? Oh, okay. Right, I can just, right, right. I can just go to community college for a couple of years and do that and yeah, pay yeah, like yeah. a fraction of the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm paying 50 grand a year to go to uh you know school for composition and i'm not composing right yeah 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 What's the which point? i've which some of my students have told me you know they've gone to undergrad and like you know i don't really have time to comp i only have time to compose on x day mm -hmm. i'm like it's sad you know it's and sad, i remember yeah. as an undergrad i really i remember having to like really fight for my composing mm -hmm. time like i had to it wasn't like that easy to yeah to find a 
a time when I'm not distracted by so many things that you tend to be distracted yeah. by when yeah. you're like 19 years old, you know? So, but there aren't really great alternatives at this moment of what to do if you're like 18 and you want to be a composer. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, it, 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 it can sometimes feel like a tragedy, you know? Um, or not, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just the way it is, and it it's not ideal. But you kind of you know just make do with it. Uh, make do with what you have. It also doesn't have to determine the rest of your life. You mm -hmm. know, like like right now, I I don't work as a composer right now. It's kind of like uh, to me, it's like uh, a hobby that I try to do well. You know, mm -hmm. like um, uh, like my full time. Like I work as a software developer. That's my that's the thing that I do to to support myself to make money. Um, and it's, and it's fine, you know, um, but do you find that you're, so doing that, do you find that you compose, <laughs> that, this is not another question, I should rephrase the question, if you wanted to compose like you did, let's say at Juilliard, for example, mm -hmm. I don't know how many hours a week you were composing right. at Juilliard, but I assume you were, it's, it, from the outside, it looked like you were productive, you were right, writing right, a lot right, of music, right. yeah. I don't know if that's how you felt, but from the outside, that's how it looked. So if you were trying to replicate what you were doing while you were in school, now as a software developer, mm -hmm. could you feasibly do it, or is is it taking you too? Is your work taking too much time it, from it, that? It would mean fewer hours to compose for sure. Okay, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I feel like school is uh, uh, to be able to go to school for composition. It's it's a great. Uh, like it's such a great privilege that happens like only once in your life, you know. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to take advantage because because you're there to compose, right? Ideally. So, but even then, I mean, when I was at Juilliard, I wasn't spending like eight hours a day composing. Um, I looked productive, but I wasn't spending that much time. I was maybe. But you're you're fast like, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote a lot of music when I was there. Yeah. Um, I was doing maybe like three hours of it a day. Yeah. And that was fine. That was a lot, like three three good hours every day. Is like I plenty of time to to compose. Um, I, I agree. I just had a lot more buffer time, I guess. Like uh, you know, sometimes you just want like you just want to know that okay, I have the next three days and I have absolutely nothing going on, and I'm only gonna compose. And maybe you spend, you know, three hours a day of those three days composing. Yeah. And that's cool. <laughs> that's what I did too. I agree. Yeah. Or sometimes there'd be weeks I wouldn't compose. Yeah. When you're when you're balancing it with like with a with a grown up job. <laughs> then then uh, you know, you're just a bit more tired. You're, you're a bit more, you know, your mind's somewhere else. So it's it's a bit harder. But that's just I feel like that's unavoidable. Cuz even if you were uh, like like you, like you have to teach, right? Yeah. Like you're teaching, you're you're doing other things. That takes away from your time. That takes away from your energy. So, I think I it's, like it's great, though. Yeah, I like doing like I like doing this. I like doing um, the teaching at Columbia. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's all I like doing a little of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I put too many things in one basket, then I would get very anxious about right. any one thing. Like if yeah. I was just doing this YouTube thing, I'd be very anxious. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's For something sure. I can't really control how well it does. Yeah. You know, I can try my best, but my best might not be good enough. Right. Same with the composing. I can try my best and only do that, but just because I spend eight hours a day doing the composing doesn't mean I'll be a successful composer. Right, right, right. Um, the only thing where that could be true is with the teaching. You're yeah. working full-time as a teacher, but you might get a tenure-track job in the States. You get to year six, which is when they give you tenure, mm -hmm. and for reasons out of your control, they might not grant you tenure. Right, tenure. right, right. And then you got to start all over again mm -hmm. after working at a place for six years. Yeah. So I feel like as a composer, my mindset is, um, you know, to be diversified in what I do, and and they're all they're all related to composing. Yeah, right, like they're right, all right. directly related. Yeah. I mean, like I'm having you on here. I'm not having a, you know, I'm not having like a random friend that you know does sales or something yeah. well that might be interesting although but, you could yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i could have There's anybody no rule on. that's it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i can yeah <laughs> but i'm having you on i have a right now i have a lot of composers on just because right. i i i'm very interested to to talk to you right. guys and the other thing is to be honest with you like i mean there are a handful of people where i, I know them well like you and and 
and some other folks, but most of the time when I see composers and musicians, it's like at a concert for like five minutes after the show, right. not even, just pleasantries, high yeah. by, and like we're just there just to like show our face. Show our face, yeah. <laughs> and not really to have like a real conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's, you just can't in that format. Right, right, right. And I'm just, I'm just tired of it, you know? I'd rather have someone I like come here, we talk, and then yeah. it's like, it's on the internet. Right. For whoever wants to see it, you know, yeah. and that's that's how I feel, mm-hmm. you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of what you can do now with you know with with the internet and you know with all this like for example all this stuff you're doing is because um, all of that like you have to show up to these things, you have to make sure people like know you and see you and and you know hear about you. But I, 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 I wish like collectively we could all be like a bit bolder and, and, and just go like, you know what, why do we need all of that? Why, why can't we, you know, in the same way that, look, look why, why do we need, but some people are great at school. Some people just love it. Some people are not like, again, like me, I, I, I'm okay at school. I don't love it. I don't love being in that environment, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, I don't like being told what to, <laughs> what to do. I like being told, like, oh, I need to write a paper about, like, whatever, <laughs> bar talk or yeah. whatever. Like, love bar talk. I don't, I don't feel the need to write papers about him. Um, uh, but, but even people but, that are good at school, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. be good at school, but you can't be good. You can't just be in school forever. You can't just be in school forever. You know, I have, I have so many friends that are really good at school. They became doctors. They became, they work in tech. They've started yeah. startups. Most of these people uh, have an undergrad degree. Yeah. Maybe a right. master's or an MBA. But that's it. They didn't go on and do a doctorate. Yeah. Uh, they didn't go on and, and uh, stay at a doctorate program for five, six, right, seven right, years. Right. You know, they were making money, pretty decent money too, after they, right, right, after, right after undergrad. Mm-hmm. Or you know, uh, going to law school, you know, there's a clear path and all that stuff. And they make pretty good money just out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And for relatively fewer hours, I would say, compared to a composer right. and the amount of hours that we had to spend learning our craft yeah. and writing one shitty piece after another to, to get to a good piece. Yeah. And then you write that good piece and maybe you write three shitty pieces after that <laughs> before you get to another good piece. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at least that's how I feel. Yeah. Like every time I'm working on something, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be any good, you know, right. uh, I, I don't know. And, but I, I'm spending 200 hours doing it right. anyway. So, but, but again, that's just the nature of it. You know, like it's, it's hard to compare it to all these other career paths that you can do. Um, it's just, it's just not the same. Um, and, and I feel like for us to be able to do what we do, you know, we, we you know, we get to college as composers, we get to write music and, and have that music be heard uh, by people sometimes. Um, it's, it's such a, it's such an enormous privilege, I think. And it's such a miraculous thing. Um, and it's such a special thing because it's, it's one of those things that you can do and you can kind of like devote your life to without it being that kind of exists outside this whole, this, this, this whole mode of, um, I gotta make money. I gotta advance my career. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this so I can like buy a house or whatever. You know what I mean? Where it's, where it's purely just this, this thing that you do and, 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 you're intro- and you introduce like beauty into the world, you know, you just bring about, you just create things uh, 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 that are beautiful, like for no reason other than like itself. And I think that's such a special thing. Um, there was a time when I used to really buy into the the whole um, the whole music as like a, 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 like an object that you kind of offer as a service to the and and, there, and there's some truth to that but but I think as I've gotten older and I've, and have kind of like um, uh, 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 been around the block a bit longer I kind of just see this as as this a thing that doesn't need any justification for itself other than to be itself you know. Just, just this beautiful thing that you as a human being can do. And you're not doing it for money. You're not doing it for the sake of something else. Like you do it for its own sake. And I think that's just how I've come to really think of it.
and it means it, it and it means you know it, it might not I might not be able to treat it like a real career you know like I can't ex I don't expect to make money off of it or anything but it does make it a, a, like a lot more special I think you know what I mean I mean I find that even <laughs> like I'm trying to make it a career right yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't make that a secret but it's funny when I try to make it a, a career <laughs> it's like when I'm trying to make it pure actually <laughs> The more pure it is, the better it ends up being for the career. For the career, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is exactly. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most people don't think this way. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I've been starting to say a lot, like in the last couple of years, that composing, it's, it's a 40-year career. Right, right, yeah. If you really think about it. No matter what else you're doing, it's going to, if you want to be like a composer that <laughs> keeps composing all your life, if you really love composing, mm -hmm. right, it means that you're going to, you're dedicating yeah. Composing to your life. Yeah. Or dedicating your life to composing. <laughs> right? So that means the next three, four years is just a speckle. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. In the overall plan yeah. of, hey, I'm going to write for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So in for that sure. way, if you're not writing music pure to you now, from now till the next five years, what the heck are you doing? Right. Because then... Well, you're not gonna you're gonna wait until you're famous or successful right. to write the music you want to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by that time, they're expecting the music that you didn't want to write in the first place. Yeah. To get you to that point. Mm -hmm. And then you're not. Then at that point, you're gonna be very unhappy. So this is like this is stuff I've been thinking about a lot lately, like the last yeah. couple of years. Like, what do I actually want to do mm -hmm. when it comes to composing? It's like right. I only want to do the stuff I want to do. Right. Right. You right. know. No, no, that, that's such a good point. And, and again, it goes back to what I, was, what I was saying, where you can't kind of, you can't really treat, although you can, you can't, although you can treat it as a career, you can't treat it as a career in the same way that you would treat, say, like, you know, like being a lawyer or like being a doctor or whatever as a career. Because the rewards are very, like, um, they're, they're like, like very out there, you know. Again, like you were saying, you kind of have to think in terms of decades I have to think in terms right. of like like forty years. The rewards are like they exist in that uh, in in the in that timeline. You yeah, or like you're like for example, in your case, because we can't just think forty, fifty years always. Like you got to think of small bits too. Yeah, you know, you wrote this piece <laughs> that's getting played in Florida, Utah, etc. Like five years ago, let's say, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that was a piece that at that moment of time your purest form maybe right now you don't think that piece is your purest form i don't know no no i don't right yeah. that was five years ago you okay but it's like it's almost like a, a stock or something that you bought you know yeah five years ago and now it's paying it's and now it's, it's paying big dividends yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. make a bunch of royalties rental fees from the monetary aspect and from the you know career aspect you're going to meet more people when you go to these concerts you know you're going to actually hear your piece live again yeah, which yeah, is yeah. going to be a great feeling and you're going to learn a lot that will help you to the next piece that you write, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So in that way, it's like it's like a, it's literally a stock. So right. uh, and a stock only will it will only increase go up in the value, value. In value yeah. especially if you diversify and you have your your marimba string quartet piece that gets played, your your whatever string quartet solo piece. You know they they're diversified. Yeah. And over 30, 40 years, as long as you're still writing still putting in more buying more stock <laughs> doing your uh dollar yeah. cost averaging right, this, is, right, I don't know, right. this became a financial advice channel yeah. but you know you you're like you're still contributing to the overall game of it mm -hmm. with with music that's pure to you when you are at that age when you're 30 when you're 40 when you're 50. so i mean i think this is a healthy way to look at it yeah 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 for sure um and you don't have to keep putting into it at the at like uh, a very high rate too, you know. Um, like right now, I'm not, I'm not really working on anything right now. Um, and well, well, that's not entirely true. I have like a, a I have like a musical in the works, although I'm not oh, doing yeah? much with it at the moment because it's not like a solo effort, you know. I have like a there's like a, it's split between like a, a book writer, lyricist, and another composer. So I, I kind of like have done my big chunk of it. So like. I'm leaving them to do <laughs> it right now, but um, that's kind of like I have something I have in the in the in the works. Um, 
But with the musicals, but you were doing that. Were you doing that at Juilliard too? I wasn't at Juilliard. No. Why did uh, you start that? I, I, I. It was through the the BMI Limanengo Musical Theater Workshop, which I which I did. Uh, in 2018, in June 2018. Um, that, that, that was one of the things I also wanted to, uh, uh, one of the things I meant when, you know, I was, when I said, like, I was just very curious about, like, what's out there, what else can you do that's kind of, like, not in this path of, you know, being this, like, intellectual, you know, who cares if you listen kind of guy, uh, <laughs> kind of composer. <laughs> the Milton Babbitt um, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, funnily enough, was a was a was a teacher of um, uh, Steve Sondheim. Right, that's <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, Milton um, Babbitt loved yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, musical I, I think, theater. I think, yeah, I yeah. think he was like a, a frustrated, um, uh, like show tune composer yeah. or something, something like that. He just went the complete opposite way. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just I don't know. To, to me, music is just uh, you know, being being a composer is just so full of possibilities. Um, so many things you can do that even if you um just so many things you can do outside of like just the academic uh path you know but do you think while you were at juilliard you felt that you had to kind of hide that uh that want or that desire to do other a things bit, besides a bit. Yeah, yeah i felt the Did same you feel way that? a little bit yeah. actually my first lesson with corleano with john corleano first thing out of his mouth because the late steve stuckey who i studied with in high school um, told him that I was interested in film. Mm -hmm. So I, he knew a little bit why, I mean, that I was interested, but, you know, the first lesson we had, he told me, I remember it was the first thing out of his mouth. It was very strange, actually, now that I think about it, that the, mm -hmm. the first thing that he mentioned is that we're not doing any film composition. I said, okay, I didn't come from LA mm -hmm. to New York to do film composition. Right. <laughs> I came here to learn from you. Yeah. And then we never discussed film ever again after that. You don't know what he thinks of film composition. He, didn't, he never said it. Do you we know? never spoke about you it. You never spoke about it. We never spoke about it after That's that. That's funny. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't really want to either. Does he have like an Oscar for... <laughs> he, has an, he has a freaking Oscar, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But yeah, I mean, he made it very clear from the first. It wasn't there wasn't like a a um, a like taboo around it. No, yeah. it was like no, we're not talking about film. Right. It's just that it's such a it's such a whole different universe from from like the the pure just like art, you know, contemporary classical stuff. It's such a different universe. Cause cause that's one of that that's one case where. You know, a while ago I was saying, like, uh, you know, we, like, we write ultimately, like, for ourselves, right? But yeah. film is not like that when you're, like, ultimately fulfilling someone else's vision, right? Well, it's, in a way, that in musical theater, uh, right. yeah, it yeah, kind yeah. of takes the, a little bit of the anxiety away. Right, because, because you're, you're working with other people. Yeah, yeah. and just being with other people uh, naturally lifts yeah. anxiety if you're working with the right people it could be the other way it could right, be right, right. it could be the worst thing you've ever done if you're working with the wrong people but if you're yeah. working with the right people it could be like one of the most gratifying things right and i feel like when you're working by yourself as a composer there's always going to be like a ceiling of joy i think mm -hmm. when you're working on your own mm -hmm. like if i wrote like for example if i wrote or you wrote a passage right that you think is like wow this is like the best passage i wrote all year <laughs> I mean, there's only there's a ceiling to that joy that you're gonna feel at that moment. Where I feel like if you were like, I don't know, let's for example, filming a scene mm -hmm. or scoring a scene, and the director comes over and is like overjoyed, jumping up and down, they mm -hmm. can't believe that you wrote that. I mean, you're gonna feel just by human nature. I feel like you're gonna feel even better in that moment about what you did, even if it's not right. like as intellectually amazing as what you would have come up with on your own. Right. It's a different of kind of joy. Yeah, it's a different kind of joy though. I don't know that I would compare it and say it's it's better. You know, it's just a different it, it it's just the the source of the joy is different. Yeah. Cuz with the, the like with the latter, the, the the source of the joy comes from knowing that you're bringing something in. Like you're contributing to like a project that's not just you. You know, that's kind of like larger than uh, yeah, that, that, that's not just you and 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 um and uh, 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 you're you're helping like a collective vision, you know. Whereas uh, with with the other one, where you're just working on yourself, I don't know. When I come up with something that like I just really like, and 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 kind of like 
and that joy is kind of like just contained within myself. Like I, it, I find it pretty great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I just think it's interesting yeah. from our perspective as people that like studied composition yeah. that that also know about other things because um, we really have a really good overview. I feel like of what it feels like to actually compose in these different genres because. Um, a lot of like film composers, for example, a lot of them want to write concert music. Right. But, you know, they're never really going to f know, I feel like, what it's like to be that kind of composer. Right. Because if you're like normally a film composer, or a music theater composer, or a commercial composer, and you kind of dabble into writing like a string quartet or something every mm -hmm. once in a while, that's not the same as like going the other way, right. I feel like. Right, right. I mean, just like from like a, a, like, uh, not, not, not intellectual is the wrong, completely the wrong word. It's more like the daily grind of it. Right. Like to be a, like, a, like an art composer that doesn't deal with any other extrinsic thing or just yourself, like the doing it every day thing, there's just something about that that makes you grow over time mm -hmm. that you can't really do if you're just like doing musical theater or film music most of the time and then mm -hmm. every once in a while you write like a string quartet. Right. right I feel like right. the growth is just not going to be the same mm -hmm. as like someone that you know was just doing concert music all the time mm -hmm. i could be wrong but in i've enjoyed a lot of the music that i've heard actually like danny elfman has an amazing mm -hmm. sure. uh piano quartet yeah. um I, I spoke with james Van howard he he has an amazing um uh, violin concerto yeah. that james ennis did but i feel like you know the when you when you because of the space in between uh each piece is so big usually because they're working on so many right, such right, right. big projects the 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 growth in between each piece is not going to be the same as someone like i don't know like andrew norman for example mm -hmm. sure between each orchestral piece i feel like he opened up a new chapter in a book right you know yeah that's how i feel when i listen to his music um and a lot of other christopher surround same thing or missy mazzoli um these kind of people um it's like it's like I can I can see they're progressing in the book. That right. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the the uh, again. That's kind of like the the really exciting thing about it, you know, because um, you're you're, you're kind of um, what was I gonna say? I forget what was I was gonna say. But again, it, it but again, it just goes back to that whole thing that I was saying about uh uh uh. uh ultimately it's it's um expressing yourself which kind of sounds corny but but if you're someone who's witnessing it in someone else like you're watching like for example one of these people uh, uh, some of these people that you mentioned and you're kind of just watching them do their thing you know like piece after piece after piece after piece it's so interesting to see how someone evolves that way um you know, if, if, if it's like a composer you really like or really respect, it's so interesting what they do piece after piece after piece. Um, that, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of, um, not really sure where I'm going with it, but, but you kind of start to, be, start to be more involved in like the person also and who's writing the music and not just the music itself. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely, and that's why I'm doing stuff like this. That's why you're doing stuff like this. Because I don't know, like, like Chris Rohn, for example. Like, I talk to him occasionally on Facebook or whatever. But I don't, I don't really know the guy, you know, right. to be quite honest with you. Yeah. And if I had him on, like, I, hopefully I'll have him on next year when he's back in the States. But, you know, we'll be, I don't think I've ever talked to him for more than, right. you know, five minutes at a concert, you know. Right. Probably talked to him more on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, 10 minutes on, 20 minutes on Facebook, for example. His name comes to mind because I talked to him about something a couple of days ago, but I would love to talk to him for an hour yeah. straight. You know, people that, especially people that are around our age or maybe a generation above us that, that are in the thick of it, yeah. you know, that uh, have something to say. Yeah. And usually what happens is these people, I don't know if you did this already with Florida or Utah, but mm -hmm. you know, you get to, they might ask you some questions on camera or on Zoom or whatever, right, 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 right. and they'll edit the five minutes that they want right. that helps their organization right. look good right right which is fine that's what they have to do but there's not really an outlet for us to to really speak our mind unedited right and really tell you know our story you know yeah. and that's 
I mean, it sounds really corny what I just said. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, but there is, it. there really isn't anything, and I don't know if I'm the best person even to do something like this. Right. But I do have the time and the motivation. Right. So I'm definitely not the best person at all to do this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if no one is gonna do it, if no one's like, gonna do it, you might as well might as well yeah. do it because I, <laughs> you know, like I said, I, I want to do it. But I think it's important because I'm just really tired of like seeing these super formal interviews yeah, of yeah. these people. No, I'm not into it. Uh, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, I rather yeah. just listen to your music or like read your the, program. The music's notes. more interesting. You know, I, I really, I really see it as a, you know the, the stuff that we do. I really see it as extensions of ourselves. You know, um, like like the music that we make. It, it's it, it's kind of like an extension of of the person, right? It, yeah, I mean, I don't need to hear you talk about your music. I want to hear right. something yeah, else yeah, about yeah, yeah, you yeah. that I don't know. <laughs> that I don't know. Like, you know, I, I can't stand there and say, as much as I love Steve Reich, John Adams, and these people, you know, or Philip Glass. <laughs> well, actually, Philip Glass is a little bit better about it. I mean, but yeah. I think he controls his narrative a little bit more. Right. He can really talk about his life and how he grew up and all this stuff. But I don't need to hear about your piece. I want to know about you. And I right. want I want to hear it in extended. I would love to to have a John Adams, uh, uh, hour long about him. Yeah. And 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 just him being informal. You know. Right. I saw him one time. Were you there too with the uh, New York Philharmonic? Um, he was doing his um, Scheherazade point two, the violin concerto. I was there. I was Were you there? there? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I ran into him like a. Uh, 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 across the street from Juilliard. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you like, said uh, ran into him. Avenue. What did you, did you actually? No, I mean, talk I like, like walked past him. He's like, it was, <laughs> okay. it was smaller than I expected. Or but, I think that was him. Yeah. But you were at this uh, meet. This I was. Uh, uh, Two point. Oh. You were. Uh, so there was a rehearsal at the New York Philharmonic. Uh, I don't think I saw the rehearsal. I saw the concert of a. Of okay. That piece. Yeah, yeah. But there was also this meeting that we had backstage. Uh -huh. with the I librarians and the archivists of the yeah. New York Philharmonic. You weren't at this thing? I don't think so. I don't, just go, to, I don't just go to the New York Philharmonic no, 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 backstage. No, no, no. It was an invited thing for Juilliard composers. Like Max, I think Max I, Graff I may was have there. Been, I may have been there. I Jared remember. Miller yeah, was there. I, I do remember when, when John Adams was there. But, um, there were like 15, 20, but it was a lot of people. I don't think, yeah, what, what are they talking about? And it was like the super formal context it was almost like a composer's form yeah but it shouldn't have been that way yeah. it was and instead of talking about Scheherazade point two they went on this whole thing about talking about his 9-11 piece mm -hmm. and so we the, showed up there the mm -hmm. trans on the, the trans migration of souls, souls. Yeah. it was a great piece but 20 year old piece and we're there to hear the new piece mm -hmm. Scheherazade right. point two right and uh you know we're sitting there all of us had the same thought and we're like we don't we like this piece, but we don't need to hear John Adams talk about it. We know we could, there's dissertations on this piece. Uh, we can hear the piece online. Mm -hmm. We, we want to know about Scheherazade Point too. He just freaking finished his 45 minute violin concerto. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to know how, what it was like writing this thing. Right. And I want to ask him a question. Right. But we weren't allowed to ask him a question, really. <laughs> or there, there wasn't like this, um, it wasn't that we weren't allowed, there was no space for it. Right. We weren't invited to. Right. And I just thought, wow, like another super formal meeting with a great composer. Yeah. And it's not even on YouTube. Like, I might as well be watching this on YouTube. Right, right. With a formal interview, because that's what it was. Yeah. So, anyway. But I feel like sometimes that, that's like a way to protect them, you know. Because, you know, like a composer, like we're shy people. We don't really, you know. I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be just like ask random, you know, like questions by anybody I, in like I a public mind. event. I don't care, you know, my, personally. I don't care. I don't care. Ask me. Ask me anything. I right. I, I, and it's just a me thing. I don't care. But, but I. But I can imagine it just be like a kind of like protection for. for you the, think for these he people. requested that? Maybe. I don't know. Well, that would be interesting. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't know. I, didn't I have feel no like idea. That. I shouldn't be saying things. I don't. I don't know. know. It but. was just. I, it's. It's still stuck with me. Five, six years later, this this strange meeting backstage. But, at the, uh, you're feeling no. But I get what you're saying. I don't have much of the much of a taste for the whole formal extremely formal like uh, we're 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 i'm a composer blah blah blah. i'm gonna talk about you know like give a lecture on like I, I don't have a huge taste for it um which is which, which was what i experienced a lot of in in a in an academic setting you know you know what i mean i mean it takes away from what you've said before 
the expression. Yeah. Because like if you put a filter or a barrier yeah. to your expression, it's not really your expression anymore, right? Right. I mean, I get it. There, there's value in having constraints, you know? Like, like, for example, when I'm writing musical theater, I can't just do whatever the hell I want, as much as I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, I've done, and I've done pieces, I've done theater pieces where, like, people actually complained that, oh, this is too beautiful, this is too, like, expressive really? or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like, I, I don't like hearing that because I think I, 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 think I did what, what needed to be done. But, but there's that kind of dynamic that you have to play with that, oh, yeah, right, this isn't about me. This isn't just my vision. I'm also like working with, I'm working with a lyricist. I'm working with a book writer. And, and they have a vision of the work that, that you all have kind of have to agree on. But ultimately, you know, it, it's, it, it's impossible to see what another person is, you know, what's completely in another yeah. person's head, right? So you don't get a full picture of like what their true vision is, you know? Yeah. Like I mean, they don't get a, a full sense of what my true vision is as a composer, you know? Well, I mean, it's a different, it's a totally different world when yeah, you're working yeah, it's with those collaborative world. art forms. And that's, yeah, yeah, the, that's yeah. the beauty of it, too. And it can it allow you to do things that you would never have thought you, you could do, mm-hmm. working with different genres yeah, within. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, if you're working on a film, you could be working on something that needs a jazz score, yeah. or then a rock score, or whatever, for example, that you would never have thought to do in a concert music yeah. setting. So there are pluses and minuses, like you say. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, I feel mo- even though I don't do a whole lot of it, because it really is, uh, uh, it, 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 it takes a whole lot out of you. Even though I don't do a whole lot of it, for me, I feel most in my element where, like, like orchestra feels very much like, like I'm in my element, you know? Um, I don't do a whole lot of it. I don't, you know, that, that's a rare opportunity. But when I'm writing for orchestra, that's when I feel like, okay, this is where I can like really express myself or do what I want in a way that I don't feel with chamber music, for instance. I just don't feel that, that connected to it. The thing I remember most about you is that you were more up for writing orchestra music than anything else. Like you didn't, it was like sure, the I'm only more, thing I'm more you, excited by right. it than anything else. But I'm the opposite. Yeah. I mean, I do write, obviously, I have a lot of orchestra mm-hmm. pieces like you do, but it's, I'm more excited to write the, the string quartet or the, right. or the octet or, the, or even I'm writing a bunch of solo pieces right now. I'm mm-hmm. like really excited about that. But with the orchestra piece, I'm like, I, I cannot do this again. It's just like, really? it takes so much out of me. <laughs> it does. Yeah. And again, I don't do a whole lot of it. I haven't done a whole lot of it. You know, like I did it quite a bit when I was at Juilliard and then, you know, a, a little bit after that. But it's not like I'm spending all my time like writing orchestral music. It's just that it's, <laughs> it's just more rare. So it feels more special. Mm-hmm. And it's also just a medium that I, I love. I mean, a lot of it just goes back to... I mean, it's the same with you, I'm sure, you know, what got you into this whole thing in the first place is because of like the music that you loved, right? Like me, I loved, you know, I, I loved, I loved the, the Mozart symphonies and the Beethoven symphonies. Yeah. And that's what really got me into it. Yeah, I remember um, having these like, I remember when I was like an eight or nine, I must have had these like, you know, those little small pocket scores? Yeah. That are like beige-ish on yeah. the front. I had like the, Mozart, yeah, yeah, like the yeah. Mozart Symphony 40. Right, right. I right. had... Um, I had the New World Symphony, Dvorak, and I had the Beethoven. Oh, the Beethoven! I had like a piano trio or something, right. like a very obscure piano trio. <laughs> but those were the things that I remember the most. Um, yeah, and two of them were or- big, or- you know, yeah. orchestra pieces. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, probably like like most uh, composers when they start out. You know, I started out with smaller pieces. You know, like for like for piano because I played the piano. Started out with piano pieces because it was what I knew. But when I discovered. Uh, like orchestra pieces by say Mozart or Beethoven, like, and they did, and I and I found out that they ne- they didn't necessarily know how to like play all those instruments. It wasn't necessarily they weren't necessarily writing because they knew how to play all of those instruments in the orchestra. Like that was a revelation to me. That you could just oh, this is just something that you can do, right? Yeah, um, or like not not being able to play the instruments. Like, and yeah, write yeah, for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually that something was, that, that was a revelation to me. Yeah, yeah. It's still uh, when people ask me what I do, or that's usually the first question. Oh, you can you play all the instruments? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My like, hell no, I can barely play the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you can't play the piano? No, that's not true. Watch me. Let yeah. me try to play a Beethoven sonata, <laughs> and I'll you watch me fail through it. I can't right. do it. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
even that even that's kind of like uh, 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 unusual to me though because I always I always saw composing as like an extension of um playing an instrument like for me it always came out of the of the of the, of the piano but but it, but but it, but it doesn't actually work that way at all you know like you can you cannot be an instrumentalist and be a composer I and know. some composers are really snobby about that they're, too they're, they're pretty oh, snobby about I don't want to I don't write with the with the computer I don't write with the piano yeah christopher rouse was like that oh yeah he didn't write at the piano he just had like his he didn't even write at the at the computer he just had like his it's just the score, <laughs> the score. And just right on the thing and yeah yeah i mean some composers yeah. are very proud about that i'm like yeah, yeah, doesn't, yeah. doesn't freaking matter i mean he wasn't like arrogant about it but it was just how he liked to work which i which i thought was wow <laughs> i put a poll out on this channel like maybe a month or two ago a lot of people voted like 96 people um voted in this poll on my channel and uh the question was um how do you write music you know right. there are three answers <laughs> yeah three an three ans three possible answers you can choose number one pencil paper you know mm -hmm. number two computer number three a bit of both mm -hmm. and overwhelmingly it was the third a bit of both a bit of both there's no uh, right or wrong way to do it you know yeah it's I mean, whatever, just, works whatever the hell works yeah. for you at that moment you know yeah um that said there are some advantages to the computer like you know like of course like now like no one's going to read a handwritten score <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> of course there's advantages to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. both you but, know? but yeah ultimately it's it's your process and whatever works for you right and i see all these videos on youtube uh like the Muse score four just came out oh yeah who gives a damn? I'm really sorry, but who oh, yeah, gives a no. damn? It's not going to make you any better as gotcha, a composer. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because these you are know? just tools. Yeah. But like, so, oh, I see people, oh, what's better, Sibelius, Finale, Muse Score, Dork? Who cares? <laughs> right. You know, if you pick one and, and learn it well. Pick one and learn it well. You know, um, I know in the film world, it's a little different because, you know, if you, if you work in certain studios, you know, they only work with Cubase. Sure. Or they only work with Logic. Or whatever it is yeah. okay that's that's a big deal but when you're composing on your own yeah it's like you know just try them all out demo all they all have great demos try each out for a week see which one yeah fits your style the most and that's it some people are pc people some people are apple people or apple people. <laughs> it's the same it's like there's no they're all great you just choose choose which one works well with with you i feel like it's just such a barrier just 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 get writing you know yeah yeah so it's the same thing when i started this youtube thing it's like you know which camera do i buy right it doesn't right, freaking right. matter it's like use your started. iphone use whatever yeah you know it doesn't freaking matter like it, it just doing it will make you better yeah so. i'd like to get to to a point like that but with um composing in general like I, I find it very frustrating that you know I, I love orchestral music, but it but it's, it is pretty frustrating that um, it's very hard to do it because you need to have a lot of people involved, right? Um, but but I keep thinking a lot about well, how do we like how do we how do we get past that? You know, um, why can't I just write? Why can't I like why can't I write more music that's that can be played by like I don't know. Um, that doesn't require like you know such a huge logistical effort to perform i mean that's like an old question right but it's always that's an old question like a lot of composers have struggled with this um i mean you the, well, the question is how do you write is, like, how do you write music that actually like you know gets heard and doesn't right. like require like a huge like logistical effort well it you depends know? what you mean heard in a live setting or yeah in a live setting oh i see yeah right right, right. um well, I don't think that I don't think that's ever going to change, you know, yeah. uh, because the music that's not logistically difficult to put on is usually music that's going to be in the background. You go to a bar or something, right. it's the band is playing, but it's not the main thing. Right. For example, um, that's logistically relatively simple to do, but it's not going to be the main feature, mm -hmm. I feel like. But mm -hmm. with every even like a string quartet show or something, it's always logistically complicated right, right, to put right. on yeah um i just did this show with the columbia undergraduate students there were 10 of composers and we had to book the venue we mm -hmm. had to book the performers and yeah. all of that yeah. and it was like a nightmare and it yeah, cost yeah, yeah. like 10 grand to put on what? Yeah. for one night mm -hmm. 
and we weren't collecting any ticket. Uh, right. It was a student concert. We didn't collect any ticket fees, but it's like, this is crazy, you know? There's got to be a better way to, to do it, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's a I better way. Uh, I yeah. like the idea of recording. Um, like my solo pieces I was mentioning, I like the idea of just, these pieces haven't really, only one of them has been performed so far out of four, but they've all been recorded. I put them all on YouTube. Yeah. And that's it. And whoever wants to play it in the future live, they can, they can deal with it. Right. If they have a way to do it. But yeah. I'm not going to touch the logistics side yeah, yeah, of yeah. my own music. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, that sort, of, that sort of thing just, you know, hammers the whole point that, you know, what we do is it's, it's so impractical and it's so, you know, you can't really put a like, like a dollar value on it. It's impossible. Yeah. Uh, even though we can pretend that, you know, we can pretend to like treat it like a business or whatever, you know, like offering a service or whatever. You know, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to uh, reduce it to that. It's so impractical and, and, and makes no sense when you no, really think doesn't. about it. But, it doesn't. But, <laughs> but it's so important that it exists, you know. Yeah. I feel that way. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm on cloud nine it's, doing it's what so I'm doing. It's so important you know? that. It's amazing. That, that there is this thing that exists that we can do. Yeah. Again, for its own sake and not the, because we just want to, you know, for me anyway, like I want to make, I want to make things that are beautiful, you know, I want to, that's kind of like, the, that's the world I want to live in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I 100% agree. And, it, and it's so important that if you have that impulse at all, that you kind of, that you act on it yeah. without putting, you know, without necessarily putting a dollar value on it. I love it. Because there are other ways to make money, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're doing the same thing. And I'm yeah. doing the same thing too, teaching. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not our main thing. And if it was our main thing, it would be, it, even if it was your main thing, can you imagine writing like, let's say, four or five pieces a year? That, oh, no, no, no. That are I, like, I feel like the, yeah, and then the main thing is like a myth anyway, right? Because most people do have, uh, do have to have something. Like, like a lot of us teach. For example, you know, like that's just kind of expected. All of them teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that's least just kind that. of expected. Yeah, or they yeah. have rich partners or that kind or of thing. <laughs> like it's, it's one or the other, you know, or yeah. a combination of the two. I mean, that's, that's the reality. Yeah, and it's and, so hard to do anything, whatever it is, for eight hours straight a day. It's just, it's just impossible. No, especially something creative. There's nothing more exhausting than writing yeah, music. Yeah, for sure. Like focused writing, not yeah, yeah, bullshit, yeah. you know. Not bullshit. I'm gonna go on Instagram for every ten <laughs> yeah, minutes. No, I'm talking about no Yep, yep, yep. No none of that BS like two hours straight or of writing, you know, or at least thinking about writing. Not like pen to paper, but like focusing on that. It's hard. Yeah. 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 So, but, but it's it's so important that we do it, you know. That somebody has to do it. Yeah. I feel it's like it's like a thing that you always used to sign off your, your newsletters with. Like uh Something like uh, like I'm 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 very fortunate to be able to do what I love and encourage you to, to oh, do I it. Used to, I do that as a long, long time as ago. Can. I don't say that anymore. Like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it, maybe know, I should put that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a good message. Like whatever it is, it doesn't have to be music or whatever. But I, th yeah. I think something, anything that you that you uh, are able to do with love, you know, yeah, it's so important that you just do it for as long as possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm both. I'm glad that we both agree on that because that's the most important thing. Yeah. So with that, <laughs> check out Josh's music down in the description below. It's going to be linked there. And thanks so much for coming yeah, on. You're very welcome. Thank thanks you. for having me.